Will you turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Numbers, chapter 14, and we're going to begin at verse number 10. Numbers, chapter 14, beginning at verse number 10. I want to talk for a moment about the importance of reflection. The importance of reflection. My brothers and sisters, uh, part of Part of the importance uh, of our worship is not just the fact that we take time uh, to give praise and honor and glory to God, that we take time to lift up the name of Jesus. It's important that we do that. It's important that we uh, take time to praise God for all the things that God has done. But the other side of the proverbial coin, if you will, the other thing that is important in that is that we also take time to remember and reflect. Which is why every once in a while at the beginning of service, we will take a moment to just remember what God has done for us on this week as we enter into worship. It is why after the sermon we take time to think about how does this message impact my life and what is God doing um, uh, right now in my life because that reflection time is critical and support to our ongoing spiritual life and development that um, uh, just like for an athlete that uh, the games happen between the lines. Uh, this is uh, basketball season by Michigan Wolverines just won the Big Ten regular season championship. I was very excited as they beat Indiana last night, and so uh, just as the game was played between the lines, but the learning from the game doesn't happen on the court, the learning from the game happens once the game is over and you go back and you think about what happened. Um, uh, whether you win or whether you lose is sometimes secondary to what you learn from the win or from the loss. Um, but you don't learn just because you win don't learn just because you lose. It is how you think about and apply the lessons that come that determine whether the win or loss has real value. There's an importance of reflection in every area of our life. Um, I remember when I was young and I was, I was in school and I was trying to be the best student that I could be, it was easy enough for me to learn the material for the test to be able to perform on one day, but asked me two days after the test what was on the test, and I couldn't remember anything because it was all about that one uh, experience. But uh, when I really learned to value learning and not just value performance, um, then I learned how to take the things I was trying to learn and apply it to different areas of my life because that's how real learning takes place. Is we take one bit of knowledge and we start thinking about how this impacts other things that we know in other areas of our life. The reflection helps for the knowledge to sink into our minds. So it actually has an impact on, uh, on what we do and how we live. Reflection is an important part of the learning process, my brothers and sisters. But not only that, it's an important part of the spiritual growth process. I would uh, argue, I would posit that uh, if the children of Israel had taken time as a part of their regular practice, uh, if they had taken time to reflect on God's goodness, that they would not have messed up at this critical place in their uh, lives. And one of the reasons why I'm so convinced of that is because the next time the nation of Israel gets to this place, the next time they get to the promised land, God actually instructs uh, uh, Joshua to set up uh, a statue of stones uh, to help them remember everything that God has done. So that as they are about to engage on the very difficult campaign of taking the city, they have already done something to help them reflect on what is happening. And so, my brothers and sisters, I, I want to say that reflection is critical for us to be able to understand what God is doing in our 
lives. And there are three reasons I want to lift up why reflection is important. The first reason is to say that uh, reflection inoculates us from fear. Reflection inoculates us from fear. Um, we are, thanks be to God, coming to the end of this winter season. The weather is finally warming up. I, we're going to be in the 60 degrees this week. I'm going to run and jump and shout all over. Uh, but if you remember back past all of the snow to the beginning of the winter season, um, everybody was talking about getting flu shots. Uh, going to Walgreens to get a flu shot. And the reason that you get a flu shot is because you know that when the winter comes, the flu virus becomes uh, very uh, rampant in the area. So to protect yourself from uh, getting the flu, uh, you actually give yourself something that will help uh, your body to be able to deal with it. Um, you, you, you learn how to deal with it. And the way medicine, the only way that modern medicine knows how to do that is to give yourself a little bit of the flu to help your body be used to it so that when the full strain comes, your body's defenses are already prepared. Uh, my brothers and sisters, but the spiritual life works a little bit different. God doesn't want to give us a little bit of fear to help protect us from fear. God actually wants to remind us of where our faith has been at work in times past to help protect us from the fear. God has a better system. Rather than making us sick in order to make us better, um, God is saying, let me remind you of what I have done in times past so that when you come to your next challenge, the fear does not overwhelm you because you are already, you already have a defense prepared that reminds you of what I have done. So for the people of Israel, when they have gotten to this place, if they had remembered that God delivered them out of the land of Egypt, when they could not even appeal to Pharaoh to give them a vacation, that God made a way not only for them to get out of the land of Egypt, but across the Red Sea and then closed the Red Sea on Pharaoh and his army when they chased them uh, to try to put them back into oppression. If they have remembered that when they ran out of food in the wilderness that God provided manna from on uh, high and then when they complained because the manna uh, was getting old after a while, God provided quail for them. If they had remembered when their water ran out, God provided water from a rock. And when they complained because the water was too bitter, God was able to take uh, the bark from a tree and use it to make the water sweet. If they remembered, my brothers and sisters, that God had just not provided for their basic needs, but God had actually given them some of the things that they wanted along the the way, if they had remembered that uh, despite the extreme temperatures of the wilderness, God had provided a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night so that they would not die in the wilderness, if they had remembered all of that, my brothers and sisters, I believe they would not have been so afraid of the challenge that was in front of them. However, we know how fear operates. We've talked about this. Fear makes us a little less rational. Fear makes us a little less intelligent. Fear turns normally logically and rational and reasonable people into irrational and unreasonable people. That fear turns us from the best of ourselves into the worst of ourselves because it bypasses everything that we ought to know and the information that sometimes is in the back of our minds is hard to access because the fear shuts down that process, my brothers and sisters, and so it is important that we engage in regular reflection because it takes all of those things that God has done for us from the back of our minds and puts it to the front of our minds. So let me see if I can uh, if I can explain it like this. Um, has there anybody here? Is there anybody here um, that God has done something in your life? I mean, you can look back in your life and you can say, there was a door there that was closed that God opened for me. You can look and you can say, when I was by myself right there, God did not leave me alone, but God picked me up. You can look at a point and say, I was going to give up at this point. 
place, but God held me and wouldn't let me go, even though I was trying to get out of his grasp. You can look at a point in your life and say, I didn't think it could get any worse, but God let me know that it wasn't going to get worse, it was going to get better. You can look at a point and say, I never thought I would be here when I was there, but God has made a bridge that brought me from here to there. Is anybody here that can look and say, I know that God has done something for me? Didn't know how a bill was going to get paid, but God provided a way for the bill to get paid. Didn't know what tomorrow was going to look like, but God made sure that you got through your tomorrow. You didn't know what was going to happen, but God let you know no matter what happens, I've got you in my arms. and I'm scared because it's a lot of rain and it's a lot of lightning and it's a lot of thunder and so I, I don't know much about lightning and thunder I just know that it's loud and it's bright and so I'm sitting in the back and I'm trying to be brave but I'm really not so I'm holding on to the, uh, to the car door this was before we knew that you should be in car seats until you were a certain size or weight. So, uh, uh, because I was old enough to sit up on my own, then my parents didn't have a car seat for me anymore. And so I'm sitting in the back and I'm strapped in and I'm holding on to the car door and I'm holding on to my seatbelt and I'm being very, very quiet, but my eyes are very, very big. And it's raining and every time the thunder hits, I jump. And every time the lightning hits, I jump a little bit. And, and I'm sitting back there and I, I don't, I'm worried that we're going to crash. I'm worried that lightning is going to strike the car. All of these things that I'm worried about. And so I'm holding on for dear life until finally the exhaustion of the fear and terror causes me to go to sleep. And when I wake up, we're not in the hospital and I'm not dead. We're actually at my godmother's house and we go in and we play and everything's all right. And so the next time we're driving and there's a thunderstorm and there's a lightning storm, I felt a little less fearful. Because I knew that my dad had driven me through one thunderstorm and lightning storm without any problem. So I had confidence that if he did this before, he must know what he's doing so he can do this again. Uh, let me tell you, by the third thunderstorm I had to drive through, I didn't even pay it any attention. I was laid out on the back seat, knocked out sleeping the whole way because I had developed the trust in my dad that my dad could pilot me through whatever was going on around me. So I didn't care what was happening on the outside because I knew the person in the driver's seat. My brothers and sisters, what I'm simply trying to say is that when you know that God has safely piloted you through the storms in your past, then you can stop worrying about the storms because you know who's at the controls. Because you know who the pilot is. And so whatever's happening around you, whatever circumstances are happening around you, whatever winds are blowing or rains are falling or thunder is, uh, is crashing or lightning is flashing around you, you don't have to worry about it because you know that the person that's in control of your life and destiny has got this under control and you don't have to worry about it. You can sit in the back and go to sleep and say, God, I'm not going to be worried about this because I know that, you're, that I'm in your hands and if I'm in your hands, it's the best place I can be. So because you got this, then I'm going to let it go. Reflection, my brothers and sisters, help annihilates us from fear. There's a second reason that we reflect, and that's because regular reflection prepares us to bear witness, both with our words and with our lives. Right. 
Notice the prayer that Moses prays. When God says that God is so frustrated with God's people that he's going to kill them all, that just, that just blessed me right there. That just blessed me. God got so frustrated with the people that God was going to kill them. So I, I don't have to beat myself up about being angry about those people in the other day. God got so frustrated with the people that God was going to kill them. And Moses said, you can do that. But if you do, then people are going to tell a story about what happened. And the story is going to be that you brought the people out of Egypt, but you couldn't close the deal. You could not finish what you said. And so rather than suffering the embarrassment of defeat, you decided to kill them in the wilderness. And because you said about yourself, we didn't make this up. You said that you are the Lord of the Lord whose anger does burn for a moment. But whose steadfast love far outreaches your anger. And so that you pardon the iniquities of your people. And so because that is who you are, in this moment, I know you are angry, but let your steadfast love outlast your anger. And notice that it wasn't because the people had done anything right that God did not kill them. It wasn't because they fasted and repented that God did not kill them. It wasn't even because Moses had been such a good leader that they, uh, that God did not kill them. But it was because God's character was on the line. And God acted in ways that was consistent with God's character rather than letting the moment overwhelm God. So let me unpack that there's a couple of things at work here. Number one, I would just put a pin aside to say that, um, that part of the Christian life is learning how not to let the moment overwhelm us. But as we are trying to be God-like, as we are trying to be more like God and more like Christ, it is knowing that Sometimes, as the Bible says, even moments get to God. But God's character overrides whatever emotions God feels in a moment. So that when moments get to us, it is important that we remember that there's something bigger happening than just the moment. And we remember who we are and who God is calling us to be, but that's just a side note. This is, this is really what I want to say, is that the reason uh, uh, that the people are spared, the reason that the grace is given to them, is because there's something bigger happening, and that's the story of what God is doing in the world. And this story is so important that God puts up with the people's rebellion in order for a larger story to be uninterrupted. They ought to be important to us too. And we ought to find ways and times and places to share the story of what God is doing with us as it connects to the story of what God is doing in the world. 
the the people's uh, the people's deliverance from this moment. The reason that the people are not wiped out is because God is interested in the story of God's redemption in the world. It is why God chooses a handful of Israelites in Egypt to work on behalf of and deliver them because that God delivering the people who are oppressed is a part of the story of what God is doing in the world. And it is why Moses says, God, you can't kill the people because then it changes the story. The story isn't that you work on behalf of those who are oppressed. The story is you only do so much and then when you can't finish, you kill them. And so, my brothers and sisters, that uh, the regular reflection helps us to be able to talk about the story of what God is doing in the world. That we ought to be equipped to be able to share that story with the world because the story is so important to God, it ought to be important to us. Uh, in other words, let me say it like this. There is somebody in your life who is struggling trying to find God. And they may have been in church or they may have not been in church. They may know they need to find God or they may have no idea they need to find God. But there is somebody in your life that needs God's presence in their life. And the only way that they can find God's presence in their life is if you give a testimony about what God is doing in your life. Uh, they need you to share what God is doing with you so they can begin to see and understand what God was doing with them. Uh, let me see. Let me see if I can explain it like this. Uh, so I used to play basketball. I used to, I used to play basketball quite often. And I remember a day we had a very long practice. And at the end of practice, we had a one-on-one -on -one tournament. Um, where we were playing one-on-one -on -one with every person on the team to see who the best player on the team was. And so I had beaten everybody on the team once. But the rule was uh, that once you lost one game, you got to keep playing uh, until you lost a second game. And then the winner of the winner's bracket had to play the winner of the loser's bracket. So I was the winner of the winner's bracket, and I had to play the winner of the loser's bracket. And so the game was the best two out of three. And so I won the first one, I lost the second one, and we were playing the third one, and I got so uh, tired. I was so exhausted, I felt my skin, it felt like I had scotch tape all over my skin, and it got to the point where I actually stopped sweating. Um, and I remember I grabbed a rebound, and I just couldn't move my legs anymore, and I collapsed on the ground. And I didn't know what was happening to me. I had never suffered from exhaustion or dehydration before. And I didn't realize that's what I was going through. I was just, I was on the ground. I, I felt sticky all over and I couldn't sweat. Um, and, um, and my dad was there and my dad came and picked me up and he told me what was happening to me. He had, it had happened to him before, so he told me what was happening and he gave me some water and took me home. And then the next day, he did, I told you reflection is important, right? So he took some time to reflect over what was happening and asked me how I felt leading up to the experience and told me these are the signs that you're dehydrated and when you get to this point, that means it's probably time for you to quit because you know what the end is gonna be because now you've experienced it. Um, and so, because my dad had experienced this before, he was able to help me understand my experience so that now I knew the signs of what was happening around me. So the next time I felt like my skin was sticky, then I knew it's time for me to quit because I'm getting to my breaking point. Now I know what this feels like. What I'm trying to say, my brothers and sisters, is there are people, if you've never experienced or you've never understood or don't have a language for understanding what God is doing in your life, things can be happening to you and around you and you just don't know what it is. And so God is actively calling people to God's self, but people who don't have a relationship with God or an understanding of what God is doing in their life, they aren't able to recognize the signs of what God is doing. And so they need somebody who's had an experience with God that can help them interpret what is happening in their life so that they can see what God is doing and they can actually respond to the call of God. And that's where we come in. Because we are the people who have a relationship with 
God. We know what God has done for us. And so we ought to take some time to reflect on what God has done in our lives so that when we come to people who are trying to figure out what is happening in their lives, then we can say, no, it's not because you're losing your mind. It's because God is calling you to something different and it's time for you to move past some of the stuff that's been holding you back. No, it's not because all your friends and family just don't like you anymore. It's because you're growing in a way that's making people around you uncomfortable. But it's okay because, I mean, it's God has a plan for you. It's not because there's everything is wrong in your life. You're feeling a dissatisfaction because God is calling you to something greater and you need to let go of some things to move on. Those of us who have been there before can help people navigate the signs. And so it's important that we reflect so that we are able to and equipped to share with somebody else what's happening in their life. The last thing, my brothers and sisters, is this is the point we've been trying to emphasize throughout these last three sermons, is that regular reflection helps us to not miss what God has for us. Amen. The end of this text says that after God spares the people, God says, I'm not going to kill them. But they're not going to enter into the promised land. These people, they will, they will wander in the wilderness. And when they have died, I will take their children. And I will bring their children into the wilderness. And if you were to keep reading, you would find out that somebody in the, uh, somebody in the congregation got it at that point. It took them that long, but somebody finally got it. And so they realized what was about to happen, and they said, oh, let's go right now and take the land. And God said, no. No, it's, it's not time. And then they decided they were going to go anyway outside of God's plan of protection. And they got beat. Regular reflection helps us not to miss what God has for us. There are times in our lives, and if I can just be honest, I'm at a time in my life where I know God is doing something. And I'm, I'm in the midst of trying to figure it out. I, I don't know it all. I, I can't see the whole picture, but I know that God is moving in the direction. And so I am doing the best I can to follow what God is doing. And, and, and the thing is, if you've ever been in this place, or you're in this place, maybe your experience is like mine, where you have some anxiety about it. You, you know that God is calling you to something don't know exactly what it is. You know there's some difficult decisions ahead and you don't know exactly how to make them. And so the anxiety can sometimes overwhelm you. So I've come to a place where What I'm learning I need to do is take some time for reflection. Yeah. And remember that this moment that I feel like God is doing something is part of an ongoing yeah. The people did not just emerge onto the promise land. This was a journey that began when they were in Egypt. And God promised them that they would leave in Egypt what God was going to do. This was a process that began a long time ago that God was moving through. And so the reflection 
it's important for us to remember that we're actually on a journey that God began with us a long time ago. We didn't get here by accident. But I remember, I remember the first time I knew that God was speaking to me. And how overwhelmed I felt. And how unworthy I felt in the moment. But I knew that God was up to something. And I can remember various points in my life when I felt God's spirit moving in and around me. And how crazy it felt at times. But I knew God was up to something. And reflection helps us to draw, to connect the dots, to connect the lines, to help us get a clearer sense of what God is doing in our lives. So, if you're here, and you have this sense, like I do, that God is doing something in your life, what I want to invite you to do is to take this time, this time that we call the response to the word, and do some reflection. And with a friend or a neighbor, take some time to share about what it is that's, that God is doing in your life right now. 